those of you who know me know that I love art house films. Alejandro Jodorowsky and David Lynch and the amazing worlds that they create. But there's another world of film that I just love. And that's the world of exploitation cinema. In 1968, the MPAA was set in motion, telling you what you can and can't watch at a certain age. Obviously, there would be some sort of rebellion, and this was the birth of the Grindhouse. Sleazy exploitation movies trying to push the boundaries of what was acceptable. You had exploitation, black exploitation, sex exploitation, cannibal flicks, biker flicks, revenge flicks, rebirth of the haunted house genre, anything you could think of. The real definition of an exploitation film is just simply a movie that exploits one specific topic to death. However, this doesn't very well explain what an exploitation film is. Nowadays, it's basically any film made during the 60s, 70s, or 1980s that try to push the boundaries of what is acceptable in the mainstream and what is allowed in theaters. They're generally low budget and cause controversy. Some are good, some are bad, some are just okay, so we're gonna focus on all three. Now, there were some good films that came out of this subgenre, but a majority of them admittedly were pretty shitty, but it was kind of that enjoyable kind of shitty. You know, that kind of Put it on in the background as you're doing something else, kind of paying attention but not really kind of shitty. That kind of shitty. Then we have the So Bad It's Good films. The type of films like Ilsa, She Wolf of the SS, or other films like I Spit on Your Grave, a revenge flick made with good intentions but unfortunately was taken the wrong way by a few. Black exploitation films like Superfly. They're not really good, but they're entertaining nonetheless. And this weird Indonesian film called Mystics in Bali about a woman that tries to learn witchcraft and, uh, well, just, just take a look. And then we have the actual good movies. Films like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, noted for starting up the slasher genre. Eraserhead by David Lynch, an amazing psychological experience. Easy Rider, an enjoyable film about two men trying to find themselves on the open road. Mad Max, one of the most epic action films of all time. And Logan's Run, an amazing space opera. So when and why would you ever watch these movies? Well, personally, whenever I'm writing a script or I'm editing, sometimes I like to put a Grindhouse movie on in the background to kind of, you know, get me in the right mood or state of mind. And sometimes, just because they're really enjoyable and they're fun, stupid entertainment. You know, a nice break away from regular, in-depth masterpieces. I suppose I'll conclude with exploitation films of the modern day. Hypothetically, exploitation films still exist, but for some reason they're not really categorized in the same kind of raunchiness or style of the ones from the 60s, 70s, and the 80s. There are, however, many films that play either homage or are direct satires. The films of Rob Zombie, that being House of a Thousand Corpses, The Devil's Rejects, Lords of Salem, and even the Halloween films pay a lot of tribute to exploitation films of the 1970s, and Robert Rodriguez and Quentin Tarantino banded together to make their own recreation of a 1970s exploitation film, but it goes one step further, getting the same type of critical bashing and hate that a real Grindhouse film would get. <laughs> 
In 2007, an amazing satire of black exploitation titled Black Dynamite showed up in theaters. It's an amazing satire, and I highly suggest it if you're interested in the genre. Bobo Sal sounds like some cartoon shit, but I understood it to be a question that he was asking me. And I don't have to know how to speak Chinese to know what that question was. Why Black Dynamite? Why? So, that's it. I hope you enjoyed our little run-through on the history of exploitation cinema, and I'll see you next time.